absolute iron-fisted censorship. We have these left-wing social platforms for these Democrat billionaires. They cut off discussion about the laptop. They're cutting off the president of the United States, who's a candidate again, the press secretary of the president of the United States, because they're trying to share the story about the laptop. The phony journalists in this country, it's not a matter of journalism, investigation, knowledge, information, presenting it to the American people. Affirmatively destroying a story that would harm Biden before the election. Well, you saw what happened to Hunter Biden. Nothing, because his daddy's going to pardon him after the election. We've been saying that here literally for weeks and weeks and months and months, same with radio and even on Fox, and now the backbenches have finally picked up on it because, as you know, they regurgitate it and they notice the same thing. So Hunter Biden's in the clear no matter what. That's why after the conviction, they all went out and had dinner. They didn't give a damn one way or the other. And on September 5th starts his tax trial. The most important tax trial never took place because the statute of limitations ran and the uh, Department of Injustice did everything it could to kill it, as did this David Weiss, the U.S. attorney. But uh, they succeeded there. And they also succeeded on FARA, the Foreign uh, Agency Reporting Act, um, because uh, that statute of limitations ran on that too. And those two could have, of course, involved Daddy Joe, which is why they let the statute of limitations run, which is why they tried to kill this gun case. It was the judge who saved it and said, wait a minute, what the hell are you doing? Even after that, Biden, Hunter, and his lawyer, Abby Law, were so arrogant, they didn't agree to another agreement they tried to give them, so they had to go through with this exercise. And of course, he was convicted. It has nothing to do with the Trump case. This was an actual jury in Wilmington. That was the home court with a real judge. You notice she didn't do things in the courtroom that were controversial. You notice they knew exactly what they were charged with. The jury instructions were very clear. The whole thing was completely different. That was a trial, a real case, despite the best efforts of the left. And what's at the heart of that case, of course, was the Hunter Biden laptop. The laptop's the heart of the tax case. It's the heart of the gun case. It's the heart of all the cases. It's the heart of exposing Joe Biden's lies, his corruption, his ties to the shakedown practices of his son. His son is a fall guy for the dad. That's why he will pardon him right after the election. I'm telling you the truth. And in September, it may, in fact, drag in Joe to some extent, but I'm betting they're going to try and figure out a deal there as well knowing full well that it'll all be changed after the election, even if Biden loses. The laptop. We've talked about the 51 former spooks, spies, who signed that lying of a letter to try and uh, put disinformation out, and they succeeded weeks before the election. That letter was organized, if not drafted by Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State. He's denied it. The problem is the former deputy director of the CIA has testified under oath to Congress that, in fact, he was behind it. So is Sullivan, this whole crowd that keeps leaking to the media against Israel. The point is that during the debate, the last debate, Joe Biden pointed to his own dirty work. He knew it. That letter, when Donald Trump brought up the laptop, and he pointed to that letter, and uh, that got him through it, Biden knew the laptop was legitimate. His son knew the laptop was legitimate. Listen to me. The FBI knew it was legitimate. The CIA knew it was legitimate. All of government knew it was legitimate. But they all sat back. And the media was spoon-fed this letter from the 51, and they wanted to believe it, so they believed it. And they lied to you, the American people. I'm going to play you a clip that's longer than normal to make the point. Now, that said, you need to understand that it's not just the laptop. It's whether the Sam Alito and the flags or whatever it is. The media are in the tank. The media in America are a, not a free media, not a real media, not what the framers intended, not what those who adopted the First Amendment attend, uh, uh, intended. We have a Democrat Party, radical left media that supports big iron-fisted police state government as long as the Democrats are in charge. And Biden knows it. The Democrats know it. They all know it. They work together. They're in the same social circles. They date each other. They marry each other. Some of them are in the government, and then they leave for the media, vice versa. You see Stephanopoulos, Jake Tapper. They're perfect examples, but there are multitudes of them. Unfreedom of the Press, a book I wrote, lays it all out. 
But let's take a look at this, how they did the cover-up for the laptop, because that laptop is filled with information that is devastating to Joe Biden, Mr. Big, Mr. 10 percent, and all the rest of it. And I can assure you that if this was a laptop that was owned by one of the Trump kids, or it was a Ron DeSantis laptop or any Republican laptop, this would be treated completely differently, be treated like the phony flag store against Alito. It would require an impeachment hearing. It would go on and on and on. And the FBI and the CIA and the others wouldn't be covering up for it either. They'd be leaking along with everybody else. Let's take a listen. Go. The Trump campaign is accusing Twitter and Facebook of censorship after the social media companies blocked the spread of an unverified story about former Vice President Joe Biden's son and a laptop allegedly full of his old emails. Let's stop. Well, why was it unverified? All you had to do was take a name off of one of the emails that are in there and call them. Did you send that email? In other words, absolutely no investigative journalism took place except at the New York Post and Fox, maybe a few others. That's it. They didn't want to dig. They didn't want to look. They're, they're, it's, it, there's so much information in that laptop and so much information that was released. They had to trash Giuliani. They had to put out the false story. They had to use the 51 uh, spook letter. All those things they did to try and take it out of the news before the election. This was the October surprise, the cover-up. Go. It's a story raising concerns about whether it's real or just designed to sow confusion in the final weeks of the election. Is this not unbelievable? Is this not unbelievable? No curiosity, no journalism, nothing. They're spewing the talking points that were given to them by Blinken and the Biden administration, and they all say the same thing. And I want you to remember social media banned the laptop story for a period of time. And there have been stories that have come out since, surveys that have come out since, and it may have changed a number of minds during the course of the election. They only needed to change a relative few in five states. This is election interference. And if this case were in Manhattan and Biden were Trump, he would have been indicted for this. And so would the 51 people who signed that letter. Go. Experts say it has all the hallmarks of information laundering. This looks like your classic disinformation campaign. I'm doing this for a reason. This is CBS Evening News. This is not a news story. It is pseudo news. In fact, it's worse than pseudo news. This is effectively an in-kind contribution to the Biden campaign, where they're not only not interested in the laptop, they're using it to attack Trump and claim that he has ties to Russia because Russia wants him to win. Unbelievable. Go. Eric O'Neill is a former FBI, FBI operative. You know how many former FBI operatives? There are probably 40, 50,000. So they pluck this slime ball out of the, out of the mix because they know what he's going to say. Go ahead. Who do you think is behind this? Well, the Russians would be my number one. Okay, let's on. So this, this guy knows nothing. He has no first-hand information. He has no information. And there's the reporter. Who do you think's behind it? Well, who cares what he thinks? Why don't you do some digging? Like, get into the laptop. Contact some of the people who send emails. Find out what's going on. Instead, they bring this stooge on. And they interview him like he's some kind of a material witness to something. He's a nothing. He's a nobody. But that's how they promote the narrative. That's how they project it. Oh, all these experts are saying it's got to be it's got to be the Russians. No, it was Hunter. Go. Social media outlets were quick to limit the spread of the story. Twitter briefly suspending the accounts of the Trump campaign and White House press secretary after they tried to share it. Twitter and Facebook have limited. Look, the look, 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 look. Absolute iron fisted censorship. Twitter, prior owner. Everybody pulls back. They actually use this part of the story. Look how responsible Twitter is and social media. They said no. So we have this stooge who doesn't matter. We have these left-wing social platforms with these Democrat billionaires. They cut off the Trump campaign. In other words, they cut off discussion about the laptop. And you'll recall they wouldn't even allow the posting of the New York Post story that broke the story. 
Go. And last night, Twitter appeared to suspend the Twitter account of White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany when she tried to share that story. Can you imagine that? They're cutting off the president of the United States as a candidate again. The press secretary of the president of the United States because they're trying to share the story about the laptop. They just cut it off. Now, it's got to be the Russians. How do we know? Well, we got this letter. 51 guys signed it, you know, and we just spoke to one. He said, yeah, it's got to be them. Who else would do such a... The, 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 the phony journalists in this country, it's not a matter of journalism, investigation, knowledge, information, presenting it to the American people. Affirmatively destroying a story that would harm Biden before the election. They didn't want to look under the sheets. For more, sign up for Levin TV.